皆さん、こんにちは。And welcome to Shogo's podcast. So today, I'd like to talk a little bit about、uh, something that I found out as I was running my team. Team Let's Ask Shogo. You know, the four of us、uh, myself, of course, and my wife, Harumi, and also Kazu and Tomoko. Whenever、um, I'm doing, like, for example, deciding things, assigning everyone some tasks and such, there, of course, every person, each person in our team has things that we're not good at. Course, all four of us, including it's a little bit、um, embarrassing to call myself that too, but all four of us are really, really talented. I think. Well, I should just put myself aside. The three are definitely talented, very skilled, with high ability, and I trust them very much. But, of, but, but of course, each person has some kind of what should I say?、Um, Disadvantage? Not, not disadvantage is not the right word, right? They have some points、um, of skills that they lack, for example, or are not good at doing. And whenever I find that, I often find out that it's, it's often cases it's, that, it's something that was cursed by their parents. And this is something that I really want to、mm, not. Not specifically discuss with you guys, but if you can share some、um, experiences with each other through the comments and such, it'd be great if you can share. And、um, I always read all of the comments, especially for the podcast channel, so I hope you can let me know. But I really feel that the small things that your parents have taught you when you grow up have such a big impact on you, I really feel. Even if those things are really, really small, just like, just like something that, you know, Your parents just、uh, randomly said on one day, sometimes you remember it so much and it still haunts you and hurts you. you know? and, and of course, some people might think you know, it's something like really, really old, right? Like 10 or maybe even 20 years ago. You, shouldn't ju- you should just ignore that. You know? and, but that's not possible, right? I, I hope you can understand what I'm talking about. For example,、uh, if you can、uh, talk about myself, for example, my Mother definitely did everything she could for me. I'm really, I really, really appreciate her. I respect her as a woman, as a mother.、Uh, I really don't know if I could be such a parent for my own kids.、Um, I do respect her very much. But, but at the same time, she is a person from Kyoto. <laughs> she is the Kyoto person. And also,、um, she, of course, couldn't get along with her own husband, which is my father. And they got divorced when I was in high school. And she did go a lot of, of、uh, um, through a lot of depression and everything, you know, mental illnesses sometimes. And we kids need, needed to care for her. And yeah, there were some hard times. And What she often、uh, told me was that I really am a person who doesn't have a sense of, do you say design? A sense of how to look cool or proper? I don't know how to say it in English. It's really hard. In Japanese, we just say this word sense and it explains everything. But, like, for example, I should give you some concrete examples. It'd be easier to imagine. Like, whenever I go out to a barber and get a haircut on my own, she would, whenever I go, come home, she would, like, you know, laugh. At me and say, well, Are you serious? Did you really want that haircut? Or whenever I go and buy new clothes on my own, she would be like, Wow, are you really going to be walking outside in that? You know, kind of thing. I think some parents, you know, of course, not just my mother, some parents are like that. You know, they have their own、um, idea of what fashion should be like, you know, which is most of the time very outdated and,、uh, you know, and it's very、uh, different from what is popular today. But I think a lot of Parents have said that to their children, but I have actually、um, been told this a lot of times from my mother. And about my father, I think I don't have to explain about him that much anymore. I've, I've talked about this so many times, but again, he was running a company that he carried on from his own father, my grandfather, and basically I was his first son, so he wanted me to be the perfect Yamaguchi boy that would carry on the business for him. So every time I did something wrong in front of him, he would say, I'm not worthy enough, I'm not good enough, you are an Embarrassment to the family. I don't want you to show, I don't, I don't, want, you to sh- I don't want to show you to all the other relatives because you're just an embarrassment, you're a failure. And everything, every single time I did something, even just the, the smallest mistakes like table manners, how to use chopsticks,、uh, how to do greetings when I meet people from the company. I would be told these things. So, for a really, really long time in my life, I was just very, very afraid of talking in front of people. And what's funny is that it's, 
it's really different when I speak English and when I speak in Japanese, especially when I speak in Japanese. A lot of people told me, if you guys remember, I was interviewed by、uh, Takashi from Japan, right? And a lot of people in the comments there,、uh, because I, ha- I personally have blocked a lot of people who say abusive things to, to me because、um, the people looking at the comments will get negative emotions too, right? So I blocked a lot of people, but of course, Takashi from Japan probably hasn't, you know? So there's a lot of people telling me that Oshogo's fake smile is creepy or the way he talks is just,、um, just making me sick, you know, kind of stuff. And I completely,、um, should I say, agree on some points because when I speak in Japanese, With a person I just met, I do act a little bit unnatural. But these parts, again, from my history, from my father saying these things to me, it still does affect me a little bit, including the things that I've been taught ever since I started working, you know, and training in traditional culture and such. But yeah, anyways, I've been afraid of talking in front of people and I've just been afraid of making any, any sort of mistake. And I've always、um, been telling myself that I need to live perfectly. And that's the reason why, really, really far back, about a year ago, I think,、uh, I made a podcast video saying that I quit trying to be perfect because I can't be perfect. And no one is looking for someone perfect, right? It's impossible. It's so much better that I am imperfect. You know, that's the beauty of wabi sabi. What am I learning through tea ceremony, right? You know? So I, I just、uh, made a declaration, you know, about a year ago to quit trying to be perfect. You know, of course, it's still very difficult to try to let go of everything at once, but I wanted to be more of a friend for all of my viewers, you know, watching my channel and listening to this too, and、uh, show that no one is perfect. And I don't want anyone to think that, you know,、uh, when, they, when they want to train in traditional culture or when they, want to, when they want to come to Japan, they have to be like this perfect person because that's not necessary at all. You know, if I act like that, though, people might think that, oh, when you wear a Kimono, you have to act like that, you know, that kind of stuff, you know, because Sho was wearing kimono and he was acting like that. I don't want anyone to think like that, right? So, but, anyways, again, coming back to the mainstream of the story,、um, this is definitely from the curse of my parents, you know? And I really feel that also, if I can introduce some other things,、uh, I don't want to. To talk about something that's too personal because it's not about my own story. But for example,、uh, Tomoko, actually, ever since she was young, she really liked music, actually. But her parents, every single time when she sung a song you know, at home after listening to something, every time her parents would、sort of、tell her, Wow, that is very terrible singing. I can't believe you're really that bad at singing. you know. So even though Tomoko, Tomoko actually recently started training in singing, right? In the minyo singing.、And、the reason why she did that is because she wanted to、um, change it, you know, change it into、um, something positive, all of her negative memories. She wanted to change that and convert that. So that's the reason why she's challenging something new. But even though, you might have noticed, even though she was, when she started immediately playing the shamisen in front of live streams and videos, even though she was a beginner, she hardly sings. Have you ever heard Tomoko singing, although she's training in it? No, right? It's because she's still scared. She's still scared that people will criticize her for it, just like how her parents did. Now, going back, now coming to、uh, Kazu's story,、um, Kazu's parents were very, very, very strict.、Um, his parents were actually professional in sports. I, I, I won't say at which sport because that'll be you know, too personal, but they were literally、um, they were almost representative of the country, actually. Of Japan. So that's how much they were really, really professionals of sports. And、uh, because of that,、uh, he was taught very strictly, just like how their parent- parents would have, tra- would have trained. And that's how he was raised, basically. And, and another thing is that he actually has an older sister, and he always h a v e lived、uh, being compared with her. And that has been hurting him a lot too. Yeah. And Harumi has all of other stories too, which I've explained a few in my past videos as well. But、uh, the podcast is getting a little bit too long, so I'll just cut that off. But, anyways, we all have these curses, we say in Japanese, noroi, curses from our parents, basically. And I really feel that our lives, every single person on this planet, our lives is about overcoming. These curses that our parents give us. Because every person on this planet will have a parent, even if you've met them or not met them, they will give you some kind of curse. Maybe it is that they didn't raise you in the first place. Maybe it would be that kind of curse. It could be anything, but I really feel their lives are about overcoming it. Yeah. And I really want my team and all of the activities that we do 
you know, to be an occasion, to be an opportunity for all four of us to overcome our curses and to, to be reborn, reborn into someone completely new, free from all the haunts, you know, and everything. I really want this team and all of the things that we do a perfect opportunity and occasion for my team to do this, you know. And yeah, again, I really want you to, um, if it's okay with you, of course, uh, let me know in the comments about your experiences of any curses or haunts that your parents have given you and uh, how it still affects you in your daily life today. It'd be great if we can share um, stories with each other. Then everyone, as I always say, the ultimate dream of my life is to make all Japan lovers' dreams come true. So I know that there's a lot of people studying Japanese, willing to come to Japan to travel, study and work, or even train in our traditional culture. However, I am very afraid that Japan will not be able to make everyone's dreams come true in the future because we are facing a lot of social problems as I often explain in my videos. We are losing our traditional culture because of the um, declining of the population. And also the younger generations, the very few younger generations who are supposed to be carrying all the good things about Japan, are dying the, at the highest rate in the world by suicide because of all the social issues being shoved against them. So I really want to dedicate my life to try to make Japan a better place. I really want to try to, to um, solve the social problems. I want to evolve and preserve, preserve and evolve traditional culture and also help out the younger generation so they can have a brighter future. Yep. And to do that, my first step is to achieve 2 million subscribers. It's not my first step. I always say that incorrectly. <laughs> my nearest goal right now is to achieve 2 million subscribers by January 2023 on my main channel. So be all your likes and comments will help to boost my videos. New viewers have never seen my videos before. It'd be great if you can help me out. And also all the merchandise going to be selling on my channel and also the stage performances we're going to be doing is going to be decided soon as well. Um, we're working on that as well. Um, I'm really excited that Kazu has basically decided the instrument he's going to be playing. It's going to be the drums, the taiko. And that's going to be a lot of fun exciting that's uh Hinata downstairs uh, playing a lot but anyways I'm really excited that all four of us has now have our um the assigned instruments that we each have it's gonna be great so I hope we can look forward to future information as well and yeah today is actually gonna be the first day where I'm gonna be filming the Shogo's classroom right after this I'm a little bit nervous but I'll do everything I can and I hope you can look forward to the video that's gonna be coming out thank you so much guys and again I'll be waiting for your comments I got those I watched that what are they doing?